Hey everybody, Clint Kennedy here. It is January the 19th, 2018, and today I'm going to be speaking more about my childhood, specifically what it was like growing up in the hospital for most of it. But before I get into that, I'd like to backtrack because on the last video I mentioned that I don't eat real food. So you're probably wondering, like, how the heck does he eat, right? So the way that I eat is I have something called a gastric tube, which is a tube that's from the outer skin of the stomach, and it goes into the wall of the stomach. And basically what that is is like a tube that I get a, like, a formula through that has all the vitamins and nutrition that I need to eat so it's like I eat full meals even though I never take a bite by mouth and I think in a way it's better because you know people pick and choose what they want to eat and sometimes what they choose isn't necessarily healthy for you but I have the pleasure of knowing that everything that goes into my body is 100% healthy <laughs> and also it helps with medication as well because I can't swallow pills, so I get the liquidated forms, and it saves me the trouble of tasting that chalky texture that medicines have. And so now that that's cleared up, I'd like to go into more about my childhood and now, you know, having SMA since birth. I spent a lot of time in the hospital for like the years two to like ten those were the years that I mostly spent in the hospital like over 50% I'd say now from the way that that sounds it probably sounds like a living hell right but really it wasn't that bad because I was there so much I knew all the nurses on my unit like, they all knew me, and I knew all them, and I really cared about them, you know, and they really cared about me. It's like we were a family there, and I wanted to talk more about some of the stories that I had there, and good and bad, because I'm realistic and want to cover both perspectives, but I remember, like, I had a few, like, awesome nurses and like one of them okay before I get into the story I have to tell you that there was a Wonder Woman television show in the 70s and millennials might not know that but my mom showed me it once and I really enjoyed it so I was a big fan of Linda Carter as Wonder Woman that's the name of Wonder Woman Linda Carter and uh but the way that she transformed is she does like this slow motion spin and as she's spinning her clothes change into like Wonder Woman and everything and the surfs knew that I loved that show and every time that she would come in and was about to give me a shot or something that I didn't really enjoy she would spin like Wonder Woman and sing the theme song. You can probably look up the theme song on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, she was singing that, and that always lit my spirits and everything. Mm -hmm. And I had this other nurse that would do my vest, and the vest is like a vest that you actually wear, and it fills up with air, and it shakes you, like, really, really fast. And the goal of it is to loosen secretions in your lungs. But uh, every time that she would put it on me, it had these two huge hoses that go into it. And she would swing them around. And she would say, like, Darth Vader, she'd go, Okay, my father. Like, Darth Vader. Because she knew that I loved Star Wars, and I still love Star Wars now. But, uh, yeah. And see, it's always good to have humor in times like that, because some of those times I was, like, really sick, like, really sick. But you know something else that's interesting that you probably don't think of is that you not only meet interesting 
people through the nurses, but there are also, like, a lot of interesting patients, you know, that I ended up meeting and becoming friends with. And I remember one in particular, his name was Gabriel, but I call him Gabby. And he has Karari, which basically means that fluid builds up in his brain, and he has to get it drained every so often to a procedure. And that's what he was there for. And we met in the game room. It had this like little game room where it had video games and everything that I loved. And, everything. and we just hit it off. We liked all the same things like video games. Like we played Yu Gi Oh! at the time. I don't know if you remember Yu Gi Oh! And we also loved anime, like Japanese anime. We both really got into that. But it's almost uncanny. We loved all the same things. And I've never had that, like, not to that extent, at least, with anybody before. And even after we both left the hospital, we kept in touch. And... But I haven't seen him in a long time because he moved to Chicago. And that's a long way for me to drive, so we can't go there. But I, uh, I think he's doing good still. But yeah, see, you meet interesting patients. And yeah, what was really cool about Herman, it was Herman Memorial Children's Hospital, that's where I was in the hospital. And uh, I had this one floor that's designed to look like a park. Like the carpet is, looks like grass, and it has a pond with like little cartoon fishes in it. And it had these huge tree barks, and it had like a little like laminated paper leaves that were hanging from the ceiling. And I always loved going to that room because it was like you were in another world, you know, and I really enjoyed that. And I liked it so much that I even had my birthday there one time. <laughs> it's kind of weird, like you wouldn't picture someone wanting a birthday in the actual hospital. But I did, you know, and we took a cake, and all the nurses that were there at that time, that was their shift, their lunch break, and we all sat down and caught up and had cake, and it was really cool. And it's kind of weird to say, but I actually used to love going to the hospital. It's kind of weird. Like, nobody ever loves going to the hospital, but I did. Because that's a testament to the staff there and what it was. And now nobody I knew was there now. They either moved on or they retired. And so, and I haven't been in the hospital for like seven years. So that's really good. And I remember one time I put on a concert for the nurses and my doctors where I sang the song that they made for me, it's called Songs of Love, and they basically make you write down all your favorite things and they put it as a song. And you know what I found? That is that actually it's on Spotify. Type in my first name, and it should show as Quentin Georgia. I don't know why it says Georgia, I'm not from Georgia, but uh, yeah, let's take it, yeah, give it a listen. It's really fun. But I sang that, and everybody loved it. I, like, slick my hair back, put on some sunglasses and everything in my hospital gown. And, yeah, it was really cool. And also, I spent Halloween there one time, and I dressed up as Spider-Man because it was when the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie first came out back in, like, 2001, I think. And everyone wanted to be Spider-Man that year. So I got a Spider-Man outfit, and it came with a web shooter with Silly String, and I shot the nurses up, and I shot my room up, and everything got all messy with Silly String, and I remember that, that was really fun. But as you know, since it's a hospital, not everything that happens there is 100% good all the time. So I'm going to tell you about at least one bad time, or one instance that it was kind of bad, where... Okay, not a lot of people know this about me, like, 
nobody has a card secret, but I'm actually terrified of tape. <laughs> it's kind of weird, it's like a phobia, but I'm terrified of tape. I've been that way ever since I was little, and the reason for it is because one time when, like, when I was about to be discharged from the hospital, I had the central line, which is like a tube that goes directly into your vein and it's used to draw blood and give intravenous meds. Well, they had to take it out because it's a temporary one. Well, this doctor that I didn't even know, it wasn't my usual doctor for some reason, he barged in, he looked pissed off, he was. Didn't say a word, not an introduction or hi, bye or anything. He grabbed the tape as it's like an adhesive tape that it's stronger than the average tape. It looks like saran wrap with adhesive on it. But you usually take it off with adhesive remover slowly so it doesn't hurt. But this guy grabs the tape rips it off my skin like a band-aid it's way more powerful than a band-aid so it really really hurt and my skin was so raw that it was red for like days afterwards but ever since then I hated tape it used to be worse when I was little like I would scream bloody murder every time somebody brought tape around me but now, it's more tolerable, but I still think it's very uncomfortable. So now you know, like, one of my greatest weaknesses is cave. <laughs> but, like I said, like, there are good and bad times in the hospital. But, in my experience, I've come to find that the bad never outweighed the good. Like, for every one bad thing that happened, there was like three or four good things to happen immediately after. That, not completely washed it away, but it made it like where that wasn't your focus, you know? So I really did appreciate that. And there's so many more stories that I could tell, but I think I'm going to divide this into like two parts because... There's like a lot of information for one video, so I think I'm going to close it here, and then I'm going to continue filming for next week in the same clothes and same setting and everything, so that way it'll be a smooth transition. So, thank you for watching, this has been Quint Kennedy, rolling out, see you next time.